Hello and welcome everybody to this short video Tempo Budget Basics for Jira Server. So my name is Alexander Eck and I'm working as a customer success manager for Tempo. So in this video I'm going to explain you the very basics of Tempo Budgets. And the fundamentals of Tempo Budgets are folios. So a folio in Tempo Budgets consists of three main parts and these main parts are the schedule and the scope and the costs of a folio. So the scope of a folio is always a container of Jira issues and, this, and these Jira issues can be defined by a Jira filter or anything else but Tempo Budgets will always create a Jira filter behind the scenes for you. The schedule of a folio is always the start date and the end date that you define for your folio. And the costs are on a folio are the efforts on the Jira issues that are within the scope of the folio. So each time that you lock work, for example, for on a Jira issue that is within the scope of the folio, Tempo Budgets will convert this effort or this work lock into a cost or and therefore Tempo Budgets will track the actual costs on a folio. But you can also very easily enter other costs on a Jira issues by adding a cost on the Jira issue itself. So now I will go on the overview page of Tempo Budgets and the overview page is accessible from the Tempo drop-down menu, folios and more. This will bring up the starter screen of Tempo Budgets and here you see a lot of folios on the main screen. On the left hand side you see also portfolios. Portfolios are actually containers that contain or that where folios are assigned to those containers. So for example, I have different containers here and these are actually built up like a folder structure. So for example, we have a portfolio here, product development, and beneath this portfolio product development, we have different portfolios, cloud solutions and web solutions. And within those portfolios again, we have actually placed here two of those folios that we are going to look into a little bit in more detail. We could also have other portfolios, for example, service contracts or team budgets for my team here. And we could place our folios within those portfolios here. But I will start with a folio here, for example, Paradigm in Cloud. This is a folio and where you already can see here the start date and the end date and the project manager. So I will open up this folio and tell you a little bit something about what we see here on the screen. So this folio is intended to track a product development. So I have a product that I want to develop and I want to plan and track my costs against that specific project. So from here, we have different sections that I'm going to explain to you now. So for example, here you will see the first section is the progress section, and we have the finance section, and then we have here a graph that is showing me some of those costs that I see here on top, and the staff section where I see actually the members of my staff here. So here on top I see the key figures of my folio. So I can directly see if I'm ahead schedule or behind schedule or if I'm over of or under budget. So by clicking here I could also see additional information, for example the cost variations or my performance indexes. So the progress section is divided into two parts, the schedule and the scope. So we already discussed that the schedule is the start date and the end date of my folio. 
and we see here how much or what the progress is of my schedule. So we see here I already this folio started on the 1st of June and I suppose to be the project or the folio be ended at the end of October. So therefore 65 working days out of my 100 have already been completed. So the scope section here actually tells me how much I already have completed my issues that are within my scope of my folio. So you will see here on the right hand side those issues that are within the scope of my folio. So in this case I have 24 issues that are within the scope of my folio and when I click here I will get a list of the of the GR issues that are within the scope of my folio. And as we see, the scope of my folio is defined by a JIRA filter, in this case, scope of Paradigm Cloud. So, what Tempo Folio or Tempo Budget is doing is contracting all those data of those issues that are within the scope of my folio. So, it will tell me how much time I have spent what is uh, the original estimate of my of my issues and how many hours have been are remaining on my issues so tempo budget is getting this information to show me the progress of my scope so that actually tells me I have an original estimated on those issues of 1588 hours and I still have 364 hours to earn, to complete, in order to finish my project. So in the finance section we see here in this case we see only the costs because in this case I only want to track the costs and not the revenue. I will show you a folio later on where I track costs and the revenue but in this case I only track my costs. So here for example we the costs are divided into two main sections in the green section and the red section so the green section always represents the plant costs and the red section represents the actual costs and we can both see we can see on in these two these two sections that the green section for example is divided into dark green and a light green section so that actually means that tempo budget is also tracking the time of the costs so it will tell me until today, so from the 1st of June until today, my estimated costs are 45,000 and I still have a remaining plan cost until the end of my folio of 26,000. 26, so I have a total plan cost of $71,000 here. The red section will indicate me here that I have actual costs until today of 37,500 and I still have or tempo budget is estimating for me that I have still $11,000 to come so I will end up with a complete cost of 48,000. This is a projected end cost of my project. So the blue section here is what we call the earned value management. So when you use for example tempo budgets for project management you also are interested into the earned value so actually what you have earned so far. So you will see here for example that you have already earned more than you have actually planned. So that actually means when you have done so you are actually ahead of your projected time. So that is actually also tempo budget telling me 
So I'm, it is telling me, Tempo Budget is telling me that I'm 60 days ahead of my schedule. And we will also see from here, from the two costs, from the planned cost and the actual cost, that my projected end costs or actual costs at the projected end date of my folio will be 31% behind my planned costs from here. So beneath the cost section we see here different graphs. Again, this is the same information that we see from here, but you can actually see here again the green line represents the planned costs, the red line represents the actual costs and the blue line represents the earned value. So we could see from here that the planned cost is statically growing from the begin to the end. This is what I estimated. But my actual costs are actually growing, going up and down, depending on how much hours I have logged on the GRE issues that are within the scope of my folio. So the staff section here is showing me how many team members are actually working on my project. So I do not want to go any further from here. I now want to switch to another folio that is also tracking revenue. So therefore again, I go to my overview page of Tempo Budgets. And for now, for example, I go to a folio where I track my service contracts. So for example, here I have a service contract for different or have a folio for each of my customers, for example. And when I click on that specific folio which is Springfield City. For this folio I'm actually tracking the support efforts towards my customer Springfield City. So we could see from here, we could see different information from here. So in this case again we have our, our sections progress, finance and staff members as we see here. But now we also see additional, additional section, which is actually the revenue section. So in this case, because I'm tracking the revenue towards my customer, I always plan, I also plan a revenue and also enter actual revenue. And now if I also track my revenue, Tempo Budgets can also calculate the profit of my folio. So in this case, I have a positive profit because my revenue is more than my actual costs. So therefore I will get new columns here. Again we have the planned cost and the actual cost as we have seen before, but now I also have here the planned revenue and the actual revenue. Again my columns are divided into two sections, the planned value until today and the planned value until the end of my prospective end date. So in this case I have completed everything of my scope. So that actually means that my project is finished. I have completed all of my issues. So I'm actually ahead of schedule. So that is also telling that to me here. I'm actually uh, over budget or will be over budget at the end of that is actually today. So, and I will also be, so we see that from here, that here you can see that I will be, the cost will be more than planned at the end of my project. But you can also see here that at the end of my project, I will be 25% behind my schedule. So if I do not enter any more invoices, as Tempo Budget is assuming, I will have a planned revenue of 20,000, but I will end up with cost of or revenue of 15,000. So I'm actually behind revenue here. But still, my margin will be positive because I have less costs than I have gained revenue. And here, and from this case here, again, I have my cost section here, so I can always very easily see how my costs are going to develop and also how my revenue is going to develop here over that time. So I will see here my planned revenue 
and very similar it is for my profit. So it's going to tell me how my profit is going to develop over, over the time. Okay, so I hope I gave you a slight introduction into tempo budgets, what tempo budgets can do for you, and what you can track and what can you can, can get out of tempo budgets. So there are, of course, in order to set everything up properly, there are other webinars on our YouTube channel that I recommend that you look at, like how you can actually set up your budgets and track up your budgets and also how you set up your revenues and track your revenues. Adding stuff is very easy, so that is also explained in more detail in our other webinars. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.